Michael Suka is the Assistant Treasurer and the Housing Minister and he joins me this afternoon. Michael Suka, welcome. Hi Patricia, good to be with you. Just before we get to your portfolio, 21 new coronavirus cases in New South Wales, including in Casula and now the Star Casino. Are you worried New South Wales is headed for another lockdown that might mirror Melbourne? Well, I wouldn't say I'm necessarily worried about um, th them heading towards another lockdown, but I think there's a permanent uh, level of worry that we have um, in all states and territories, even those that uh, are not presenting with significantly high cases, because as the PM has made clear from the beginning and indeed the National Cabinet, uh, there are going to be instances where there are breakouts from time to time uh, until we have a vaccine. And that's why we have placed a whole lot of emphasis, of course, on the COVID Safe app, but also on the contact tracing capabilities at a state and territory level, uh, because it's very important that we get on top of those outbreaks quickly, do the contact tracing, lock everybody down that needs to uh, have, be locked down. Um, but I think um, that that is almost going to be business as usual for us for a while, Patricia, and that is uh, little flare ups here and there, uh, but the appropriate response will need to be putting a sort of a ring of steel around um, those outbreaks and making sure they don't get more widespread. You mentioned little outbreaks, but Melbourne's far from little. It's in fact a, a pretty big place. The shutdown in Victoria is expected to cost around a billion dollars a week. How much could a second shutdown potentially in New South Wales add to that? Well, I, look, I, I think the Victorian case is, is not a little outbreak. I was really just referring to the New South Wales case. Obviously, the Victorian experience is a, a much more widespread outbreak. Uh, and it seems to be a result of some quite catastrophic issues with hotel quarantine uh, arrangements here in Victoria. But as to the cost, uh, there are significant costs here for Victoria, as you've rightly pointed out, about uh, well over a billion dollars a week. What that will do for unemployment, for businesses, some businesses that sadly never return, some jobs that never return, we won't know um, for a little while yet, but uh, we know that the risk is certainly on the major downside there. If that was to be replicated uh, in a bigger city like uh, Sydney or New South Wales more broadly or, or in any other state and territory, obviously that just gets exacerbated. So, you know, as Victoria is, um, you know, an economic engine room of this country. About 25% of our economy, I'd still argue, is, is the manufacturing um, heart of Australia. Um, so uh, the impact that uh, this significant issue that we're focusing on in Victoria at the moment, what that will have for the economy more broadly um, is quite major and of course the budget as well in October. Yeah, are steps being taken to try and avoid the sort of outbreaks in public housing in New South Wales that we've seen in Victoria? Your housing minister, of course, housing has been where these outbreaks have happened in these public housing uh, blocks known as the blocks now. Are you worried about that? Well, again, Patricia, I mean, I think uh, all um, housing ministers and health ministers at a state level, indeed all premiers and chief ministers, are concerned around any areas that have got high density. I think if you look at the experience uh, out of Europe, um, certainly out of North America as well, uh, clearly where you've got higher density, uh, the issues tend to be more acute as far as COVID-19 goes. So that would apply to uh, high density public housing as it would to high density housing anywhere. I mean, there are some parts of our country where public and social housing is not high density, and I don't think you would necessarily expect to see okay. a higher incidence of COVID-19 there. So I think it's it's more of a density question, Patricia. It is a density. Sense. Yeah, I think that's um, right. But how do you think yeah. the Victorian government has managed those outbreaks in public housing towers? Look, Patricia, I'm not going to be a commentator on it. Um, I think there's no but doubt... You're the housing the minister Victorian federally. Government. I imagine you were in conversations about the management of, of those public housing towers. Do you think it was done well? Well, no, the public housing towers are the assets of the state government. They own and they manage. They have full responsibility over them. So uh, I, I know that they've been trying their absolute best. As I said, I think it seems pretty clear that the failure in Victoria that sets Victoria apart from the rest of the country has been uh, the quite catastrophic circumstances around hotel quarantine and that has had uh, an effect throughout um, some parts of Victoria which is why we're in the lockdown we're in now. As for uh, the specific arrangements that have been put in place for the Victorian public housing 
blocks, you'd need to really speak to the okay. Victorian Housing Minister. Who, so do you uh, think they're the government in, that owns them and operates? Do you those. think the Victorian government has has failed in its management of COVID nineteen? No, Patricia. I think everybody's trying their absolute best uh, at a time when there's no rule book. Uh, there's certainly no rule book with how to deal with this. Uh, that doesn't mean that there hasn't been significant errors made along the way. And I think in time we will do a stock take on what those things are. Uh, it's important as well, though, that we learn as we go because we certainly don't want to find ourselves in this situation again. So again, as far as uh, what I think have been some pretty clear failings with hotel quarantine, I'd hope they are being addressed in real time by the Victorian government. I'm sure they are. I also um, welcome today that the the state government has accepted the offer of additional ADF personnel, which is just going to help all of those things because the ADF personnel will undertake checkpoints, testing, quarantining. I mean, effectively, will be uh, there to do whatever they can to assist the Victorian state government, um, and that will take pressure off their resources, which means so that they can do the contact tracing more quickly, uh, that they can put in place better arrangements for hotel quarantine, which. I think have been lacking and which has probably led to the position we're in now. So I think we're getting there, Patricia, but I'm not going to gratuitously criticise. There's no rule book for this, but of course every government will have okay. to be accountable so for the decisions. If there's no happen. rule book, should people watching just expect more mistakes? Um, Patricia, I wouldn't say that. I mean, I think uh, people should expect their governments. Uh, a state government or a federal government or the national cabinet to make wise decisions. There's no doubt about it. And we should hold governments to account for the decisions they make. Um, as for the hotel quarantine arrangements that were put in place in Victoria that I think um, most would accept have been inadequate, of course people uh, have a right to be disappointed about that. Uh, but again, uh, I don't think we should then extrapolate that to uh, ministers or governments not trying their best. Uh, making bad decisions or making bad errors, uh, I think, has occurred, uh, certainly in the hotel quarantine arrangements, but I don't think you can extrapolate that across uh, every government or indeed every decision of a single government. Well, the Treasurer says the effective unemployment rate is 13.3%. How has the situation in Victoria changed your calculations around JobKeeper and, and JobSeeker? I mean, that that is now a completely different conversation, isn't it, if Victoria is back in lockdown? Well, I'm not sure I entirely agree with you, Patricia. Yes, of course, Victoria going back into lockdown uh, perhaps changes some of our thoughts about how quickly, um, certainly Victoria, but Australia more broadly, was going to spring out of COVID-19. But remember, the, uh, the most significant structural support that we put in place um, being the JobKeeper program runs until the end of September, which is long after uh, even the Victorian lockdown is due. Sure, but that's pretty optimistic, isn't it? So that Victoria's going to be all up and running by September if Victoria's had to deal with, or Melbourne specifically, two lockdowns. Well, all we can go on is the time frame that the Victorian government's put in place. So at present, JobKeeper will uh, exceed the time at which that lockdown ends. Now, yeah, okay, but my question is, I know I'm assessing... being rudely interrupting, but my point of my question is, Sorry. businesses shut down, then they restart at you know minimised levels, and then they have to be forced to shut down again. The economic proposition of those businesses being able to sustainably open again has now changed, hasn't it? Devastatingly. It's, it's changed in a devastating way, there's no doubt about it. There so are many of them won't reopen, No doubt, Minister. Patricia. No, you're right. There are many businesses who did all they could to survive the first lockdown and they will be very hard pressed, if not impossible, for them to survive this second lockdown, which is again, which is why I acknowledge why so many people would be very angry about the circumstances in which have caused this second lockdown. Having said that, the key economic support we've put in place, um, which applies nationally uh, and applies broadly, will be in place long after the lockdown ends. Now, there's no set and forget as far as uh, the economic support that we've put in place. Uh, and uh, we'll have more to say uh, in the economic statement later this month and indeed in the budget in October. But uh, if you look at the support we've put in place, whether it's JobKeeper, JobSeeker, cash flow 
um, boost for businesses, early release of superannuation, the stimulus payments that you're speaking about today, which will be hitting 5 million households from today. Um, we have thrown the absolute kitchen sink, for want of a better term, at this problem. And uh, at no point have we said, right, that's it. Um, we've got everything in place and nothing changes. As circumstances change, um, Australians can have confidence that the government will adjust our settings as appropriate. And does that mean, I mean, you're sitting around the table as a Victorian as well as obviously in an economic portfolio, you'll be making the case that given your state is being so hard hit, that those measures now have to be really, really carefully um, thought about because if you pull out the rug now or, or reduce those supports, that could be devastating for Melbourne. Well, I think as a federal government, we will always focus on putting in place um, broad support uh, and areas of the country that are suffering more than others will call on that support more than others. And uh, look, I don't want to see any state or territory in the position that Victoria is in now. But as we started this interview, there are going to be, uh, until there's a vaccine, clusters around the country where there are issues. And uh, where those occur, um, you can um, have some faith that the government will have in place broad schemes that from time to time will be drawn on more by some jurisdictions than the other, depending on their relevant uh, relative circumstances. So we um, will, you know, I can assure you, um, keep a very close eye on uh, how the economy is going, how investment is going, what needs to be done to encourage demand, what needs to be done to support businesses, uh, to hold on to employees or indeed in some instances to take on employees and where it's more acute in one place or another in the country uh, we will have enough flexibility in our programs to make sure it can uh, do the job in those particular places. Just finally what psychological impact do you think this second shutdown has had in Melbourne generally? I mean what is the mood in your state? Well, Patricia, um, I must say it's been really demoralising. Uh, I think a lot of Victorians um, saw the light at the end of the tunnel um, and uh, for the first lockdown. And, you know, there are a lot of people who are really isolated uh, and are really feeling it. And the prospect of six more weeks of this, they understand that it's absolutely necessary. They understand that they've got to do their duty as an Australian and as a Victorian to do so, but it is really tough. and. Um, you know, I know uh, people in my own life and friends and others who I think are struggling much more with this second lockdown than they were with the first. So I think demoralising is probably the word. Uh, I, I'm hoping that we can use that, um, that, that feeling uh, to motivate us all to do the right thing, to make sure that this is the last lockdown um, and at the same time, you know, hope that... Um, the Victorian state government can solve some of the issues that caused this second lockdown to make sure that we don't have to suffer it again. Thanks for joining us. Thanks so much, Patricia. Michael Suker is the Assistant Treasurer and the Housing Minister.